Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I've not even got Bibby full screen. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just tabbed. Just okay. tabbed. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause or YouTube if you're watching our video on demand or our podcast service. My name is Graham Day and this, this is Bib. Do you know what? I don't even need to put him in a box. Do you know what? Let's, we're all equals in this shit. So let's go split screen. And it still works. Yay! Uh, good Yay. Morning. Good morning, Bib. Good morning, Graham. How the devil are you, okay. sir? My face is hurting. Your face is hurting? Yeah. Like, this might be the stupidest thing that I've ever said, right? And I've said a lot of shit over that, like, however long I've been streaming for full time. But I think I've slept funny on my face. <laughs> okay. Because like, usually your head would be on the pillow, but I've got a feeling last night I've fallen asleep with my head, like, this half of my face just, like, planted into the pillow because, like... All of this side of my face. It's either that or I'm stroking out. Like, one of the two. It's it's just really hurting today. I don't know why. Uh, so. so, exclusive. Let me change the discussion now. Slate to Bibby is stroking out on ice cream upwards <laughs> each and every single week. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I, I generally think I'm stroking out. See, I I mean, I don't feel like I'm stroking out. I, I woke up like kind of headache it at the moment i've got this thing where i keep going to sleep and it's all fine i wake up and my pillows are like half off the bed and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, this is good this is good this is good anyway anyway moving moving on to the show this is ice cream and this is the scoop in true ice cream naming fashion and that is your daily dose of dealings and doings from the games industry and beyond we bring you our thoughts and impressions whilst baby strokes his nipples <laughs> I've got dandruff off my beard onto my t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> so I just thought I'd give my give my titties a quick rub. <laughs> this, is a, this is a strong start to the show. <laughs> uh, anyway, you interrupted my flow. Where was I? Where was I? Sorry, uh, yes, we we bring you our thoughts and impressions on the games industry news. And we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. If you are live in the chat on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads, please feel free to get involved. The reason I keep looking down is because the chat is like literally there underneath the camera on my screen. Um, <laughs> so yeah, please feel free to get involved. Say hello. Uh, give us your thoughts on what we're saying, what we're thinking. Obviously, that's important as well because you guys are the only guys that get to interact live. We don't have that opportunity for the people that watch our on-demand services. What on-demand services, I hear you say? Well, we upload this as a standalone on-demand video to our YouTube channel, and then we do the same thing with audio podcasts later on in the day on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So if you are in the chat, make sure you get involved, because those guys can interact with us on the comments on YouTube, but can interact live. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're not those guys. You are you, and welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Speaking of the chat... Fatman Dave eight four seven two says, "At least you don't have the line down your face like the Lee Evans joke. It's been slashed." Uh, I don't like Lee Evans. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't think he's particularly funny. What? Um, yeah, I absolutely adored Lee Evans growing up. I do uh, agree that he's he's not funny in terms of if you look at his more recent stuff. Um, it was based on sort of like slapstick uh, visual comedy as well as relative comedy. Um, but as he got older, he was just trying to recapture the same thing. It's the same thing as like Peter Kay doing garlic bread, and everyone thinking, "Oh, that's yeah. that's amazing." And then it, then his next tour, he does cheesecake, and it's like, "Mate, it's the same, <laughs> it's the same joke. You've just changed the words." Uh, so yeah, yeah. I've, I've never found Samantha absolutely loves him, but I've just I, I don't know. I've just never found him particularly funny. Well, uh, but there we never go. Never found you particularly funny, whatever, mate. I know. Uh, yeah, I, I, his early stuff. I, I could still watch it back and love it. Although when I watch his early stuff back, most of the jokes I remember. I don't remember the line down the face though. Um, uh, there's always, yeah. Do you know? What? I'm not. I'm not going to go running through Lee Evans jokes. We've got plenty of news to run through, so we'll we'll leave the Lee Evans jokes there as we jump straight into news. Those of the those of you that might have seen our tweets already. Um, Anthem potentially is getting a reworking, and that is the first bit of content that we're going to jump into. So let's get straight involved. Uh, and this, written by Matt Wales for Eurogamer, says Bioware confirms it's working on a substantial reinvention of Anthem. And that's following reports of Anthem 2.0 last year. Uh, so Bioware 
has shared its future plans for beleaguered multiplayer shooter Anthem, confirming it's currently in the throes of a longer-term redesign that will ultimately deliver a substantial reinvention of the core Anthem experience. Word of a major overhaul for Anthem first surfaced last November when Kotaku's Jason Schreier reported that plans to radically rework the troubled shooter into a so-called Anthem Next or Anthem 2.0 had been on the cards for some time. Eurogamer had previously heard similar words from its own sources. Now, three months later and a little under a year since Anthem's rocky launch on Xbox One, PS4 and PC, Bioware General Manager Casey Hudson has confirmed those plans in a new blog post. And this is the quote. Over the last year, the team has worked hard to improve stability, performance and general quality of life while delivering three seasons of new content and features, he wrote. Um, Phantom dropping the high in the chat. That's just completely distracted me because that was uh, uh, highlighted using the uh, <laughs> using the sprinkles. Did you? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> um, where, where was I? Yeah. Over the last year, the team has worked hard to improve stability, performance and general quality of life while delivering three seasons of new content and features. He wrote, we have also heard your feedback that Anthem needs a more satisfying loot experience, better long-term progression, and a more fulfilling endgame. We recognise that there's still more fundamental work to be done to bring out the full potential of the experience, continued Hudson, and it will require a more substantial reinvention uh, than an update or expansion. To that end, Bioware will be focusing on a longer-term redesign over the coming months, with the studio aiming to reinvent the core gameplay loop with clear goals, motivating challenges, and progression with meaningful rewards. However, the fun of flying and uh, fighting in a vast science fantasy setting will, uh, will says the de developer, be preserved. Uh, da -da -da -da. So to achieve that goal, explained Hudson, Bioware will be do some, doing something uh, we'd like to have done more the first time around, giving a focused team the time to test and iterate, focusing on gameplay first. As such, updates to the current iteration of Anthem will follow a different format to uh, that seen previously while the team concentrates its efforts on the overhaul further events and store refreshes blah, 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 they're going to move away from seasons uh, and the, uh, within the reinvention and then okay final few, couple of paragraphs creating new worlds is central to, to our studio mission but it's not easy concluded Hudson sometimes we get it right sometimes we miss what keeps us going is the support from players like you your feedback gives us guidance on how we can improve and your passion inspires us with the courage to create I look forward to working together with your involvement and feedback towards the best possible future for Anthem. Hudson offered no time scale for delivering the Anthem reboot, but did know that existing players could expect to see one year anniversary celebrations later this month. Go on then, give us your shit hot take, babe. Morning. Lennox. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, Anthem, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shit hot take welcome yeah. and now moving on to our next story <laughs> yeah because i was i was look I've, I've had the chat on my phone and then completely forgot that we've got a monitor at the back of the room which shows the chat so i've been looking at the two things um but yeah i, got, I kind of got distracted as well <laughs> um but yeah morning nx morning asim hope you're doing both all right and phantom as well obviously oh, um, but my opinion of um, uh, my, my opinion of anthem is i thought it was dead like they didn't even mention it at any of the conferences last year um, they may have, in fact, I think they may have mentioned it early doors last year, but the big ones later on in the year, it never got mentioned once. It wasn't even in the show notes or anything. So uh, the, the best thing to do for them would be to rebuild it from the ground up. We've mentioned uh, quite a lot of times the fact that uh, No Man's Sky has kind of done the same thing recently and made a, a hit of their game. Now, these kind of need to do the same. Otherwise, their game will stay shit. <laughs> Your game will stay shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, do, do you know what? It's, it's funny because there's a couple of things that we regularly, and I say we, I mean we as the scoop and we as just anyone that's got an interest in games, really. Um, particularly us on the scoop more, more recently. Uh, if we talk about the scoop, uh, not the scoop. That was, well, Jesus. I was going to say, if we talk about the Stadia, then it's, we always talk about it as if it's a bit shit. I don't mean the scoop, because that's not a bit shit. That's a lot shit, but thank you for being here anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, if, if we talk about the scoop... Uh, oh, fuck, funny again. If we talk about Stadia, we talk... Fucking okay, <laughs> hell. It's you, with your stroking out. What, what I've, caught it from you. I've caught it from you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we talk about Stadia, we talk about it being a bit shit. We talk about Anthem, we talk about it being a bit shit. Now, whenever we talk about a new game, promising the world but not delivering anything uh, quite often we talk about anthem in that set in that vein of uh in that train of thought kind of thing um because it promised so much but but just didn't really deliver as much as it is 
uh, as it could. Um, and it, it gets thrown out. I mean, Enix, good morning, Enix, by the way. I never said good morning to you. Uh, Anthem was so fun, to be honest. See, that's the thing. I mean, how how long did that fun last for? Uh, because it, it went from being E3 2017, this majestic trailer, which I actually have on screen because I've spoken about it a few times uh Whilst we've been on screen, but uh, on stream, but I've never been able to find the clip whilst I've been on air. So I managed to find it. This, which should be on screen now for those of you watching on the video uh, 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 services, just I'm going to play it. I'm going to let you listen because it's 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 two things. It's amazing visuals uh, coupled with a horrendous like E3 presentation like voiceover. Two people who are clearly actors doing a demo, chatting as if they've just been doing shit, you know, in the real world. How good does this look? I mean, that looks incredible. We call These suits give players I don't... I've, uh, it's, it's weird because I've never really been into it. Oh, like, one, even, when, even when... Even when... Even when... Sorry. All right. Damn. Looking good. Nice. You've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. Oh, there we go. It's, it's just so lame. Damn, looking good. Nice. You've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. I mean, it's, it's like, imagine fucking... Arnold Schwarzenegger just having a bit of a chin wag about his mortar strike, uh, uh, mortar suits and stuff. But how good does that look? It looks incredible. This is the kind of world that you want to be uh, spending your time. I mean, fucking those. Like, I mean, obviously this is a trailer, so they're giving you the best visuals, but it looks insane. But obviously having. <laughs> oh, uh, what's the word for it? End game. There we go. Oh, Je Enix is print chat. Just no end game and loot tables are screwed. Having all of that, but having no real major point to it, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, you were saying I quit you off because it's I wanted to listen to mediocre banter in a video. I, I, even when the trailer got released originally, it never gave me the... the it never give, it never give, made me hype. Like, oh, yeah, I don't really? know what it is about it. Yeah, I don't know what it is about it. Like I remember when I was working at, at, in my old job and uh, I worked with Willis. He would be talking about it all the time like it was the next greatest game and I was just... And this this sounds like I'm just chatting absolute shit here now, and chances are I probably am, but um, I I just didn't like it. I, I thought it wouldn't last long. Just by looking at it, I thought, yeah, fair enough. It's like Iron Man, but with guns, and you can fly <laughs> around and that. But it didn't it didn't catch me as a game that's going to be a live service game that they'd be able to continue to do stuff with. I don't know why. I just had a really bad feeling about it. Uh, and this isn't me just gloating to say yes, I was right kind of thing because. I like live service games. It, MMOs for me are like one of the, the best kind of games to be able to play because they're technically incompletable. Fair enough, you can get to the end of a particular DLC package, and you but you know full well there's going to be one around the corner, and you can you, you build in a character that you want with new weapons, new gear, new uh, legendaries if that's what you want to say, new mounts, new places to be able to buy houses and things like that very much like you can in gta if you want to, if you you earn you do highs you earn money you buy a house that kind of live service content and rockstar have done it extremely well with uh they get into a point where it's kind of getting a bit stagnant here we go here's a new dlc here's some diamond heist kind of thing yeah it's like you, um, you've got you've got all the money you've got your car you've fully customized it you've got every car that you want pretty much all in this massive penthouse apartment garage uh you've you, all that stuff yeah you've got all the weapons you've got money in the bank Okay, how about now we set up a crew and you start doing drug running or, or whatever? Uh, they add those elements yeah. to take it to the next level, and that's that's what you, when you're a game as a service, as as continued service, that's the kind of thing that you need to be adding in. So um, that's that's the, like yeah, Rockstar do it well. As soon as the game gets slightly stagnant, they'll go ahead and they'll change it up and they'll give you something brand new to bring more people back. And it shows how well it is because we talk about it being in the charts consistently every single week and they're still selling copies now. Um, but yeah, like Asim said, I hope they can turn it around with the new 2.0. No Man's Sky did. Uh, and BioWare are a super talented studio. Exactly. They've got, the need, they've got the means to be able to do so. And I hope that EA can get it right. Um, for the people who I was interested in playing Anthem anyway, because I do think at some point live service games are going to be the norm, especially if they can do it well. Um, everywhere, with the amount of live service games that we have out, you've got uh, Grand Theft Auto, which is kind of like a, a gangster world. You've got No Man's Sky, which is very much space ex exploration. You've got Anthem, which is kind of the same. It's, it's like a hybrid from what it looks like for me anyway, like Destiny meets The Division. 
that kind of thing. Um, so these different universes that people can be a part of. You've obviously got the MMOs like World of Warcraft and um, DC Universe Online, Elder Scrolls Online, those kind of... You have a live service game to meet your particular tastes in a game. And I do think at some point it is going to be the way forward, especially if they continue to bring content out and if you are a role-playing kind of guy or girl. I, d- I didn't assume you ended <laughs> It's, I mean, just jump back through the uh, chat anthem and stuff. And to be honest, just knowing gaming loot tables are screwed. We mentioned already, like really bad, worse uh, than launch Diablo three. Drop rates for Legendaries were not point zero five percent. But flying around, gunplay, etc., was fun. The new season content they made was excellent and fun as well. Uh, and Asif saying so much potential, but they didn't have the substance to back up mm. the style. Sadly, um, and it says they made good changes though. The new season events were really fun. Crossing speed running dungeons with objectives. Uh, then you get points that transfers into currency that you use to buy gear, etc. See, so, yeah, I completely I get all that. I, I love the fact that they're adding more in as they go. Mm. But but how do how do you get it so wrong? Um, and and do you know I think it's probably just that whole thing because uh, obviously this came out similar sort of time frame uh, as uh, Battlefront Two. It's it seems like you've got a game where you've got phenomenal visuals and and audio the whole package looks amazing but the actual gameplay side of it 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 surely can't be a coincidence that the mm. massive games both from ea with huge potential a lot of hype around them as well both then come out and then just absolutely fizzle out because the content and the uh um the in-game uh progression systems are based on, on, yeah. along massively flawed loot systems that uh, nobody said the word gambling don't say the word gambling nobody <laughs> said, uh, so yeah it's I'm, I'm glad that it's getting a remake because i think we can all kind of agree um that star star wars probably got an easier ride it didn't i mean let me, let me clarify that it got absolutely ripped to pieces when it was like full-on um uh, loot uh, loot box fiasco it kind of got it got pushed up to the fact that EA, the EA were having to sit around with Disney's board of directors to justify the use of the license yeah. so it clearly went far um, but but Star Wars also has a lot of um, a history of fan uh, affection obviously that affection can be a double edged sword if you piss them off if you piss off your fans you could be uh, held accountable quite drastically uh, and they were, but that affection shone through, whereas Anthem, and particularly EA, uh, didn't have that to fall back on, so Anthem got panned and slated. So Anthem has been improving as time goes on. Uh, not Anthem. Uh, EA, uh, Star Wars has been improving as time goes on, and it's at the point where we can all pretty much agree that the game's actually quite solid now. They've removed all of that uh, loot box fiasco stuff. They've added additional updates for the, uh, the Celebration Edition and all the rest, and it plays really well. So much so that uh, Luke, Jack, Lewis, each and every single lunchtime in the ice cream office are sat there full on Star Wars. Mm-hmm. In, like, I say they are. Jack is. Jack's absolutely nail it and everyone. I mean, he, he could be Darth <laughs> Vader and he kicks ass. He could be BB-8 and he kicks ass, but yeah. Um, but yeah, nobody, nobody's talking about sitting down and playing Anthem, which is a shame when you've got something that looks as good as, as that trailer that yeah. I started showing you. Um, that I mean, it was interesting that you started naming things that you you felt it looked like, but one thing that you didn't mention until at the very end was Destiny, because um, that's the game that he streamed, uh, screams for me, and people were kind yeah. of even using the phrase Destiny Killer uh, at one point in time, and I think that's kind of where it... Uh, that was probably... Uh, part of the reason why it fell so hard because when you get hyped mm. that much when you've got a game as big as destiny that has such a, a strong following and then you just literally just absolutely stumble yeah. out of the blocks then you've got no chance uh EA's new slogan ea games pay for everything <laughs> don't think it's going to catch on myself uh, my friend no, I, don't, I don't think so I don't think so um anyway 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 anthem it's a big big story in the potential that a game that we've seen it, the amount of development that's gone into that, the graphics, the visuals, even just that E3 trailer, um, the amount of attention that would have gone into that is huge, especially from a developer like Bioware. So the potential for it is amazing. It's nice to see that they've gone, yeah, we done fucked up, and then they're going to bring <laughs> us uh, Anthem 2.0 because that's that's what that game deserves in terms of yeah. the concepts and the ideas are there. They just need to give us something that's a bit more media. Bit more meaty, laugh. Uh, anyway, could you see yourself picking up Anthem, babe? 
uh, if it was at a cut price price point, then possibly. Um, I'm more interested, even though I haven't played it yet, I'm more interested in uh, getting into the Division 2. I absolutely adore the Division 1. I just haven't got round to uh, playing the Division 2 yet. Uh, as as always, there's a million and one games uh, to play. Um, I do want to get into that at some point, though. Uh, if you have played any of the Division, uh, well, at, at the first Division game or the second one, um, you'll know how good them games technically are, and which is which it kind of breaks me out as to why Breakpoint didn't do as well as it should have done. Um, that they've got they've got a structure Ubisoft and how to create games, and Division was definitely one of them uh, that kind of blew into the atmosphere. It was a live service game, kind of MMO type thing um but yeah it's phenomenal like, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into division two at some point yeah i reckon the difference there is division um i mean even division two whilst it was successful i don't it didn't do as well as ubisoft were expecting it to and i think i think that might come from the whole fatigue kind of thing ubisoft's title yeah. was there um breakpoint definitely didn't put uh, didn't do anywhere near like what they expected um, we've spoken about this before, um, but I think it's just a case of reinvent, uh, reinvention again. Oh, it's another, it's another Ghost Recon game. Oh, it's it's an, but not not that it's another division game, but I think it, in that sort of time frame as it was coming out, I don't know whether it was they just didn't message it strongly enough. I know I know people yeah. that do play it uh, really really enjoy it, but it just wasn't as successful for Ubisoft as they wanted it to be. Yeah, I mean, it, I've just had a look at the price now, and you can actually pick it up for ten pound. Um, and 15 hours ago, Push Square released a article saying the Division 2 next expansion is set for reveal in a stream tomorrow. Which this was posted yesterday, so it looks like it's going to be uh, a new and we uh, can DLC pack. Exclusively announced that the next <laughs> expansion for no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Chill out, guys. Chill uh, out. Uh, but yeah, Asim, Asim's mentioned there that he put a hundred of hundreds of hours into Division 2, then it tailed off a bit. Really good fun with a regular bunch. That's the thing with the Division, because I was playing it for so long on my own. I did have Willis and Mike to play with, but they have so much more time to play games than I do, or that at least Mike did before he had a kid. Um, <laughs> uh, so they were they just sprinted through the game, so I just had to play it at my own leisure, really, which compared to them they uh, my bullets was like rubber <laughs> was like rubber bullets compared to theirs man was doing absolutely no damage when i was playing with them but uh next gen Renegade says they originally saw uh, they originally sold the division as a completely open world that blew my mind again but it didn't deliver on that either i thought the map on the division was massive like i thought it was massive there was so obviously it feel it felt massive going into some areas because i couldn't go there without dying um, but i thought it was quite big i did really enjoy it from what uh, my, my opinion of it is that it was definitely one of my games of the year when it came out, uh, purely because of how much there is to do, especially for someone who likes uh, the looter shooters, like go into there, kill the boss, drop the loot, go back, kill the boss, get a different bit of loot, go back, kill the boss, get something else to essentially do. Um, but I really enjoyed that. See, I'm not a fan of shooting games where you have to go pick up loot and stuff like that. I mean, I, it's generally not my kind of thing. Uh, mm. One second, let me just move this out of the way. There we go. PUBG loot crate gone out of the way. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> completely different <laughs> style, uh, style of game. Um, yeah. <laughs> Morning, Osra. <laughs> Bibi says, I thought it was quite big. No, I didn't no, enjoy don't it. Clip it. I'm fucking sick of this, you <laughs> bastard. Uh, Good spot. Moving swiftly on, Osra says, Division 2 was winch, uh, wash, rinse, repeat, or Division 1. I love the first one, but playing solo was just too painful. Yeah, I, I absolutely echo that. See, I. I will tack that onto I suppose it's a games as a service thing in general um, I know uh, arguably BRs are essentially games as a service now anyway but but yeah. that style of games as a service I played Destiny um, I still have it somewhere um, mm -hmm. but I stopped playing Destiny the first one because I didn't have anyone to play with that's the issue um, it was I love the first one but playing solo was just too painful That's that kind of applies to that and um, I think that's probably why i enjoy PUBG so much i have a collective of people that i tend to play with uh, i'll do a lot of solo stuff but then i have uh, groups for duos and squads and things didn't have that for um division or destiny so i think that's probably the reason why they both dropped off because as solo experiences they're just they, it's just a bit grindy uh i think having yeah. that social element is what makes those games uh and when you Absolutely. said it was 10 quid is that on pc uh no i it just said game i didn't click on it um you know when you type in like the division two in google and then it comes up on the right hand side like sponsored links yeah 
I was hoping you were going to say yes so I could tediously link into the next article then. So we'll just say yes. Yes, it is for PC. Sorry, Speaking man. of games for PC, uh, Hocko Life <laughs> is basically Animal Crossing for the PC. Jumping uh, nice, fresh tangent from uh, Anthem and the Division into Hocko Life being basically Animal Crossing. So this is an article written by Emma Kent for Eurogame. And she says, before oh, you carry on, before you carry on, no, no, you read this, no. I need to go to the toilet, like big <laughs> style. Like that, that, that coffee is doing nothing for me. Uh, make, sure, make sure you take your microphone with you so we can you know, get the full audio experience. Experience. I mean, I can do. I can just get some lapel <laughs> mics and take them with me. That's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. We're okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, jumping into the news. Hocko Live is basically Animal Crossing for PC, and that's no bad thing. Um, I'm hoping you guys in the chat have touched Animal Crossing because I haven't played it at all. So, um, yeah, this is where I need your input after we've gone through it because this kind of means very little to me. So we've only got a little while to wait until Animal Crossing New Horizons lands on Switch. A little over a month, in fact. But what if you want to get on, uh, get in on the fun with a PC? Well, it now seems that as an alternative for you as indie village sim Hocko Life is launching later this year. Developed as a one-person project by Robert Tatnell, who previously worked for Lionhead and Sony, Hocko Life is a creatively filled community sim for PC. Uh, it's pretty easy to see the similarities to, um, uh, to Animal Crossing titles. There's a bunch of animal villagers, fishing, and bug, uh, bug catching for one thing, but Hocko Life seems to be putting its own spin on the formula by asking players to be more creative, introducing a workshop editor and painting functions so players can customise individual pieces of furniture, wallpaper, floors, and clothing. These can be crafted with the resources found by mining, chopping wood, and collecting flowers. And there's also some farming, should you need some fresh air assembling... Uh, uh, should you need some fresh air assembling your furniture uh, while there isn't yet a set release date the game is due to arrive in early access sometime in 2020 and the steam store page is certainly worth a look purely for its charming collection of gifts i do love a good gift in a year when pokemon like mmo temtem's servers buckled under sheer demand it seems indie takes on big nintendo ips can do rather well and hocko life certainly looks like nintendo uh, could attract animal crossing fans looking for more creative freedom or the attention of Nintendo's lawyers, at least, and that is why Bibby is a massive wet lettuce. It's just, oh, he just put his headset on. Jesus, you can't see it, but I can. Have you finished the story? Uh, I have. Uh, okay, opinion, thoughts, the, as Phantom would say. Uh, uh, Hog Alive coming to PC, thoughts. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, I mention it uh, pretty regularly, but do check out Phantom's uh, streams when he's, especially when he's trolling. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Anyway, Hog Alive is. If you, if you didn't uh, catch the article, Bib, well, you didn't because you were dropping bombs in the uh, toilet. But if you haven't read the article, Hocko Life is essentially what Temtem is to Pokemon, uh, but to Animal Crossing instead. So Well, that is why I included it in here today, because uh, it was kind of a discussion point, really, because I know the chat would love to get involved in something like this. If you was a Pokemon fan, Temtem is the game for you currently because of how well and how far they've taken... <laughs> The Pokemon, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They've taken the Pokemon kind penis. of feel of a game. Oh, yeah, no, they've taken the Pokemon feel of a game uh, and kind of expanded on what Pokemon was about. You're able to battle with your friends. You can go and uh, do co-op campaigns. You're able to uh, build your characters from scratch. You're able to dress them however you want. However, we've got something like this where it's taken the Animal Crossing ID and created a brand new game based off of everything that was popular in that, but just from what it looks like, take their formula and expand on it again. Is this kind of what we were expecting from these companies now? We think they've dropped the ball. We're going to step in, create our own game, make it better than theirs, and then see where we go from that. I, I think it's it's funny to see, because um, the, the end of the article actually called Nintendo out, which is what we did last week. Um, do you know what? Give me one second. Because I've just hit start on the trailer, but the Eurogamer uh, website obviously has pre-roll added stuff, and I'm not going to expose you guys to that stuff. So there we go. It's uh -huh. finished. Uh, so the end of it says, "In a year where Pokemon Emo more ten times servers, blah 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 blah, um, is, could we see more people taking uh, their own spin on Nintendo games, or see more Nintendo lawsuits?" Is kind of what it was getting at. But yeah, it's it, it's kind of, it's interesting to see that this is what one guy has done. Um, Robert Tatnell, who previously worked for Lionhead and Sony, uh, one person has put this together. If one person can do this, um, then it, it makes you think, why aren't uh, Nintendo looking? I mean, 
it's kind of an obvious. I've, I, I know the answer to my own question. Why aren't Nintendo doing the same thing? Um, because well, Nintendo are. They they have a new Animal Crossing game. The, the significance of this is that it's on a different platform. Um, uh-huh. But it makes you it makes you think that like Nintendo could potentially be. Um, selling their games in multiple places they could mm-hmm. be they could be licensing yeah maybe not to um xbox and playstation but they could be putting their games on steam um, and yeah. could be making an absolute packet for it instead hoko life is coming out which is going to take the steam for want of a better word away from their titles i mean i know there's probably um business model uh reasons for that they don't want to put their games out on steam because then who's going to buy a switch if you can play the games on mm-hmm. steam but yeah, it just it feels like there's there's a gap in the market, and 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 the thing as well is people are taking their games and making them uh, better. I realise that's obviously open to uh, interpretation, and and it's a very subjective statement. But Ten Ten being made into this massive like online multiplayer game where you can meet other people in the game that's kind of that's that's dream world for Pokemon fans, and yeah. for for that to be in existence. On uh, on PC uh, and just a small team from Spain have done that, and then you've got one guy uh, who's done the same thing with Animal Crossing, taking it more added customization. I mean, the bits that he mentioned. I mean, I will fully admit. I mean, customizing individual pieces of furniture, wallpaper, floors, and cloths, and you can paint them and things like that. Absolutely means nothing to me. That sounds like the most boring <laughs> thing in the world. But in the context of the game, it probably makes absolute sense. Um, and adding those functions in, if you are invested in Animal Crossing, and I know I am not uh, within that, but I also know that there are thousands, millions probably of people that play Animal Crossing, so much so that there is an Animal Crossing designed Switch um, that uh, is either out or is soon to be released. Um, so it's huge, it's huge. And I've seen, going back to EGX years ago, people... Um, like I've stood working on a Pez stand, and someone's coming up to me going, uh, "Have you got? Have you? Uh, what do you play Animal Crossing? Have you do, like friend passy stuff or whatever?" I was like, "I don't. Pff, no, I don't have a DS, but uh, yeah, no, don't know. Whatever. Anyway, huge, huge game, clearly massive, and has been massive for many years. But you just have to feel that Nintendo, in their business model, they are clearly successful. They've sold over a mil- uh, hundred. Was it a hundred million Switches, or is it fifty million? I can't remember what it was. It's not 100 million, yeah. That's PlayStation, that, isn't it? yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I sold a lot of uh, Switches, but so the, so the, they know what they're doing. Just feel like uh, maybe maybe they could be they could be amendments to that business model because there's definitely some Absolutely. interest yeah. elsewhere. Well, if it, well, we've seen Tem Ten come out on Bang. If this comes out on Bang as well, then we they've they've kind of got some, you know, they've got some thinking to do because they they. These these indie companies are giving something what people expect. What I mean, community expects these kinds of things. So, yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting. Oh oh, we're losing Pippi. Uh, he, he did. I don't know if you guys got that, but for me, in my headset, he sounded a bit robotic, and then we had a bit of a screen flash. Pippi, move! Oh, he's moving. He's moving. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's <laughs> um, uh, Animal Crossing. That shit be lit, says Phantom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you, do you play Animal Crossing, Phantom? Uh, I literally have never looked at it. I couldn't have told you what it looked like without looking at it. I genuinely, in my mind, when someone first told me about Animal Crossing, I thought of Frogger. <laughs> like no. a... do, you know, do you know what I thought? I thought it would be like uh, Nintendogs. When, he, when, he, when someone told me about it years ago, I mean, if this is what, it, with this game now, if this is what Animal Crossing looks like, it's kind of a game that I do want to play. <laughs> I might go back and actually play them because uh, I can just use uh, Samantha's uh, 3DS. But yeah, it, it looks great. I would would like to play. I mean, the, the mobile game was massive when it came out. I'm fairly certain it still does well now because they did bring out a mobile version of it. I imagine it's very stripped down. Um, but yeah, it's it's another massive IP, another Nintendo massive IP that somebody else is taking the formula for and making their own game out of. Yeah, I mean. It's a game that's incorrect because, as I've said, it should be Frogger. I mean, I mean, as as, as descriptions go, Animal Crossing is a better description for the Frogger game than Frogger is because you're literally a, 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 an animal, and not an animal. You're a what is a frog? Is it a an amphibian? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 biology is many years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. One thing I did 
forget to mention. I did hear it come through as I was mid-article. Yorkie Pud Party hosted us uh, a little bit earlier on. Thank you very much for the host, Yorkie Pud Party. If you are still here, sorry it's taken me so long to get to it. We're just, we're just focusing on the news and we've got a lot to get through. And with that in mind... Um, Bibbe, tell me a bit more about Animal Crossing things while I change stuff around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Animal Crossing, that is actually, one of my favourites. Do you know what? F forget the Animal Crossing bit. Uh, I've, I've actually got a question that I could be asking you. I don't know whether we do it now or not, because you there's something that you want to get off your chest on, on Ice Cream Socials. I oh, believe. my God. There is. There is. It's been pending. It's been pending. Uh, do, I, do I tweet it now, and then you can bring it up on screen before I mention it? Is that what we do? Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Ah, okay. Let me let me press tweet. Uh, how would you like the tweet? Would you like it in Slack or have you got it open? Uh, I can find it. I can find it. Okay, the tweet has none live. Uh, it's it's extremely exciting if I'm being honest because these guys are making the debut, and. As a collective, they are extremely funny, and I would absolutely love to see where they take their games, especially on their own stream. Uh, but okay. yes, I'm, I'm, I'm being very vague until you bring it up on screen. I have the tweet here now. So for those of you that don't know, maybe you've just tuned in. The Ice Cream Uploads uh, Triple Threat Invitational is taking place at the end of this month, 28th of February. So two weeks on Friday, and we have... A new team never to have graced the Invitational before. And we can now proudly announce that the next team to be taking part in the Ice Cream Uploads Invitational 3 is... Team Redman TV! <laughs> yeah, this is so <laughs> exciting, man. Like, and I've been a big fan of their content for so long. Anybody who's watched their Championship Manager uh, series that they did, uh, I think it was about three years ago now, will understand how funny these guys are. They can make content out of nothing. So having these in our competition is a massive, massive coup. I'm saying that one right. Coop. Uh, a nice coop. <laughs> it's a nice coop. Um, but yes, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I've been speaking to Paul. I'm sure he's buzzing about it as well. Do you know what? What's funny is um, uh, we've had Paul in, in a tournament before. A tournament that Bibby actually took part in. <laughs> Uh, don't mention it. Don't bring it up. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, I, I seem to remember Paul at the time telling me that well, Paul didn't do very well in this tournament. Let's put it that way. But he said that it was all down to his teammate. Do you, any idea who that was, Bib? Nope. I wasn't even there, mate. Any idea who Paul's teammate was in the uh, in the no nope. Pez? Was it Pez twenty eighteen Christmas Cup at Anfield? No, no idea. I'm I'm fairly certain before he went live. Before we started playing, he went. It looks like I, I'm, we might do quite well. We've got someone over here who can play PES. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that unfortunately that partner was me, <laughs> and we got fucking annihilated by a couple of kids. Yeah, a couple of uh, hashtag FIFA playing kids uh, absolutely uh, melted them. Anyway, meanwhile, if I jump back onto the asset, so uh, we have uh, three of the guys from Redman TV. Paul Machin in, in, in the middle, Chris Payjack on the right, and then Ross. I don't know, I've never actually met Ross, so it's nice to see you, Ross. Uh, Ross on the yeah. left. The interesting thing was uh, Paul, uh, Paul was like, look, I don't care if I win as long as I do better than Chris. And Chris on the right got uh, paired up with uh, Manny. Obviously, uh, Pez content creator, you guys will be aware of him. Uh, and Chris and Manny went on to win the tournament. Paul and Bib <laughs> out of the first hurdle. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yes. Paul has some previous in PES competitions. Chris has previous winning PES competitions. So we are massively, <laughs> massively proud to have Red Men TV, the, the Red Men, hashtag Team Red Men, uh, in the next Ice Cream Uploads Invitational. So there you go. If you want to go do this, if you want to go to our Twitter, uh, that's twitter.com forward slash Ice Cream Uploads, find the tweet, hit the uh, little love heart button there, like that, and then hit the little retweet button. I mean, you can add a comment if you want. Just just a retweet will do. Go, go, go do it, do it, do it, do it. Uh, so yes, the Ice Cream Uploads invitation will be taking place in two and a half weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. We have, is that six of the eight teams announced so far? It is. We've got a seventh, which should be lined up in the next day or so. It's already been confirmed. Everything's sorted out. We just need to make sure that we get the, the pictures and the asset created, but it is nailed on. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Things things are getting tasty. Things are getting tasty. Also, one thing uh, on the uh, subject of the invitation, a little bit of housekeeping before we jump into our next story. Uh, where 
Where is it? Where is it? Uh, you may have seen that last night we tweeted this out. If you haven't seen it already, if you're in the chat, make sure you check out uh, Ice Cream Uploads on Twitter uh, because we, uh, obviously for the Invitational, we are teamed up with the lovely, lovely people at GT Omega and Nakon Controllers as well. Uh, but GT Omega have provided us with um, a GT Omega XL mouse mat and a GT Omega backpack. You can choose which ones you want as well. That does show one style of backpack. There are a few. You can choose which one you want. Anyway, we are giving some of those away during the stream itself, but as well as that, we're also running uh, a follow retweet competition uh, on our Twitter. You can just look for that post and you'll see it. Follow, retweet, tag a friend, and you could be with a chance of bagging yourself some sexy stuff. And the, word, uh, the thing is, as well, even though you're probably not going to believe me because we are partnered with them, I do have a GT Omega backpack just here it's almost as if i knew who the dog web is um I, i've had that for a while actually um and if if you're traveling anywhere this is this is absolute not not ad hash, uh, hashtag spawn none of that stuff um this is my personal backpack but if you're traveling anywhere you can literally it's like having a suitcase on your back so if, you, if you've got a lot of stuff that you want to uh, do stick a backpack in it boom 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 uh yeah we got ross in the chat yes team red men morning ross go. good morning ross um do you know what? If, do you know what, let's do a live on air interview. Uh, how are you feeling, Ross? Are you feeling confident? I mean, uh, have you have you checked out the opposition? What, what's your state of mind? How are you going to play this and all all other interview questions? That's me holding a microphone, by the way. There you go. <laughs> Don't forget, we've got the live draw on Friday afternoon as well, live from the Ice Cream Upload Studios. So that should be interesting to see who goes where. I've just killed my plays. camera. <laughs> Somehow, my whole studio. What? My studio has just gone like. Dark. Like, like all the lights <laughs> have just turned off. Oh well. Um, what is happening? Okay, I see. Yeah, I, I have no idea how <laughs> by putting my hand up to the camera, I've completely killed the. Uh, you the killed lights. it. Yeah. Oh well, never mind. It's, I mean, it's still there, but it just looks like I'm sat in the darkness, like I forgot to pay the electricity bill. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, it's gonna put that energy card in, mate. Oh, oh, oh! It's back to life again. It's just kicked in. There we go. Uh, what was it doing? There we go. Jumping in to our next bit of news. Actually, no, we do have a response from Ross. I have no idea what's going on, to be honest. Paul just asked me to bring my A game as I'm the best in the office. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> We've just, uh, just been talking about how uh, Paul uh, has actual winners on his team this time because the last time Paul got involved in a PES tournament was at Anfield. Um, and this guy just over here in this box, uh, Bibe, uh, was on his team, and they didn't don't know fare what you're talking about very well. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know what you're talking about. That must have been my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, you know, he had some success. I mean, you've probably still got the uh, the uh, the plaque or trophy around there somewhere. So yeah, yeah, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Anyway, jumping on, we have a lot of news to jump through. Uh, I, I was there. Were you there? Oh, I'm trying to remember. There was a lot of people there, actually. Uh, were you... Oh, are you asking him if he's there when you just said he was there? Oh, no. <laughs> that, that was me asking myself. Were you oh. running the cameras? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you'd been. Were you being. Were you, were you cameras? Anyway, I'll, I'll jump into the next uh, bit of news while you uh, jump on that, because we do like, have a lot to jump through. And this... Uh, written by Kirk McKean for VG247 says, Phil Spencer defends the lack of launch exclusives for the Xbox Series X. The player is at the center. Um, so once again, written by Kirk McKean for VG247, Xbox's executive vice president of gaming, Phil Spencer, has opened up about Microsoft's plans to get in the next generation of consoles with Xbox Series X. Forget what you know from previous generations because this one is playing out quite diff uh, differently. Excuse me. Uh, Microsoft's um, Matt Booty. <laughs> uh, Microsoft's Matt Booty recently spoke about exclusives, telling people not to expect any games that only launch on Xbox Series X for at least a year or two after the consoles launch late 2020. Uh, the idea is that first-party titles such as Halo Infinite will launch on all Xbox models, but the Xbox Series X version will have the highest fidelity. In a recent interview with Gamertag Radio, Phil Spencer went into a bit more detail about how Microsoft came to this decision, saying Microsoft is putting the player at the centre and not putting the device at the centre of its vision of the future. One of the benefits 
that we have sitting inside of Microsoft is we've obviously been close to the development of what's been going on with PC for years, he explained. I think today, if we look at the PC ecosystem, we some of the best uh, we see some of the best, highest fidelity games anywhere sitting on high-end gaming PCs. Um, Ads players, thank you very much for the host. Um, uh, and some of those games you're able to run on PCs that are a few years old that have much less capability. And the state of engines and capability today means that develop has the capability to make full use of the gaming hardware that's in front of them. Uh, obviously, we built our strategy with Series X. Uh, we started with that in mind. We wanted to go build a gaming console that was going to be the absolute best that we could deliver on a television and deliver unique capability to creators that they could use to create the best games. But you don't want to do that. Uh, da -da -da -da. I keep getting distracted by all of the hosts. Thank you very much for the host, Enix. Um, but you don't want to do that to the, to the exclusion of everybody else. And you want to do that hand in hand with developers because developers want to find the widest audience possible. And yes, there are always trade-offs. I'm not going to dictate to every third party studio uh, what they have to support, but what we see in today's world is that gamers want to go and play games with their friends, regardless of what uh, device those friends are on. People want to have the largest selection of games open to them, and developers want to make use of the best technology that's available. We'll be we built this plan with all three of those as inputs, and we feel really good about where we are. See, that's that's it's either a good statement. yeah, it's it's either a really really good statement or it's a really good PR swerve. Um, I mean, even if it is a, it, it, actually, I'm saying it's either or. It could be both. Uh, what they're saying is they don't have any Xbox Series X exclusive games for the first couple of years. You take that as a snippet, and it sounds shit. It does. It does. Um, I've just invested in an Xbox Series X console, and I'm not getting games built for my console. Is what you mm. think when you hear that as a standalone soundbite. But what Phil uh, Spencer is actually saying is we will have xbox series x enhanced games so if you buy the new console you will find it as the best place to play that game however um pcs don't go oh, i'm sorry you've only got a gtx 1080 ti you need an rtx 2080 ti now if you want to play this game it's like literally just spent a thousand pound on that six months ago it's like no 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 tough too late you don't get that on pcs so um this his Comparing that to consoles, obviously, it doesn't translate exactly the same because consoles are around for seven years, not new new graphics card every 12 months. Yeah. But the logic is there. Why, if you have a working Xbox console, shouldn't you be able to play games at, at, a, at a lower frame rate? Can you drop the visuals down? Like on PC, you can play on the 2080 RTX with ray tracing on and have all of the, everything turn up to the max. You're playing it on a, um, a, 9, 8, a 960 or something like that. Yeah, you might have to turn things down because you, you want to have as bigger rendering distance and things like that you can't do that on a console and he's saying well that's how it ex that's how it is but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way so that in itself is actually a really really good message yeah i agree i agree uh, I've, I've just been reading the comments at the very bottom of it as well um and someone's posted the featured comment says microsoft is definitely going after that for the gamers title other companies leverage exclusives to push people into upgrading yet you don't see this kind of behavior with mobile and pc gaming sure if you rely on hardware sales to survive then you'll use tactics to push them for the upgrade microsoft has shown that they don't depend on the hardware sales in order to be successful in fact their hardware is simple one of the possible gateways into their ultimate goal of getting people to buy their software services it'll be interesting to see how sony responds we talked about this quite a lot over the last month or so, and maybe even longer about the fact that Microsoft are tend to be getting out of the game of selling their consoles being their number one priority. They're not bothered anymore with the fact that you can play their uh, PC game. Uh, sorry, their Game Pass collection on PC means that they've got the ability to sell their software, sell more software than they will ever, ever will hardware. And um, we've heard very small rumors that they're trying to sell their games pass to nintendo so that you can play these games uh, on your nintendo switch don't know how far that's going to go um, but they are in it for the software at the moment they want you to subscribe to their games pass whether or not that's the ultimate one or just a standard one for seven pound or eight pound however much it is a month um so yeah i fully agree they want more people to be able to they was the first people for instance to be able to open up room um cross-platform play so people can play minecraft and rocket league over two separate consoles and Sony are just joining that race. So yeah, I fully agree with the statement. I think it's a great PR piece that they put out uh, to say that we we are for the, for the players, quote unquote. 
Um, we want people to play wherever they are and play whatever they want on whatever device they have available. We have something here that you can buy that can make you have that the ability to do that. Um, but go buy our services instead. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. <clears throat> it could also be what, and if Asim's still here in the chat, he kind of summarised... Um, I don't know if it, I don't think it was Phil Spencer. It might have been. I can't remember. Someone gave a comment the other day about Xbox doesn't see Sony or Nintendo as its competitors. It only looks now at Google and Amazon. He is. He's still here. And asked him the way he summarised it was basically he's by by saying they're not competitors, he's taking themselves out of a race that they're going to lose and putting them yeah. themselves in a race that they can only win. And by also doing that, not only are they putting themselves in a race that they're equipped to win, he's also backhanding the others and saying, we don't see mm. them as a competitor anymore. I mean, that, that was a very smart way of writing around the issue of the mm. are you going to win this race? I'm not in that race, mate. You might, you might want me to race that, but I'm racing something else. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this comment saying um, Microsoft has shown they don't depend on hardware sales in order to be successful. I mean, they are clearly successful. You sell 50 million consoles, you're going to be a success anyway. Um, yeah. However, um, you could argue flipping it back with that sort of like dodge in mind. Are they actually, um, is it about console sales? They don't need the console sales. Yeah. Is it a case of, okay, well, we're not getting the console sales that we want, so we need to change our attack and if they can make you start playing xbox games on any device anywhere um it, as long as you're investing in those games if they're thinking okay well not everyone's going to buy an xbox console but if we give you the game that you can still play on your xbox you might yeah. you might go out and buy the, the xbox one x when it's 150 quid not 400 quid or 500 quid what the, the series x is going to uh, cost so much x's all the x's um so they may they may go okay if we can if we can allow people to play these games we might get them into the Xbox ecosystem that way and then that way mm. we we will still sell the games but but we have a smaller chance of selling the hardware so yeah anyway long long winded way of saying are they actually bothered about the hardware sales is that is that really what it is or is this just another way to try get the software sales if people aren't buying the hardware I mean obviously it could be it could be either or it's just it's interesting to see angles to look at it sorry what we can say the the i would agree that they've, the, they've changed lanes and it's very smart of them to be able to do that however i for, for as long as they carry on bringing out hardware and they're they're rivaling sony in that department then i can't see i, I can't see another way of them saying that we're not competing against sony they're both bringing out brand new consoles at pretty much the same time there's no other competitors in the market at the moment barring obviously Nintendo who isn't bringing a console out this year apparently um Sony will always be their nearest rivals if they carry on bringing out hardware fair enough if they were just going for the software part of it and you can play it on any device that's fair enough but with the X Cloud and being able to play a game pass on PC blah 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 so long as they carry on bringing out hardware especially at the same time that PlayStation is I can't see them changing lanes they can say that all they want but it's never going to happen you can't say that we're not that they're, they're not our rivals, but you're bringing out a console at the same time that they are. It, it's it, it is absurd that they're able to say something like that, but they're trying to spin it differently, and I think that's a really good marketing message that they put out. So we'll see where they go with that yeah, one. But it, it, I, I still <clears> think <throat> it's rude to not acknowledge your competition, uh, especially when they've absolutely dunked on you for the last <laughs> seven years. I think that's the thing, though, is what is the alternative? Yes, we are competing against them, and we are behind in terms of hardware sales. Uh, both, not only the competition, but the alternative, as we said the other day, PS4 and Xbox One are the competitors. The uh, mm -hmm. Switch is the alternative. That's that's not yeah. the same thing. That's something different. You're happy to have both. Um, uh, so, yeah, for them going, okay... Where we can win this conversation. If we start in this conversation, we instantly give the interviewers the power to say that we're already behind. By acknowledging that, then we we are behind, and that then spreads through all of the messaging. So that's the only thing really he, yeah. could, he could do. Um, but yeah, I mean, we as as just normal minded people will one hundred percent know that 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 it they are competitors. They know they are competitors. They just can't say yeah. 
we're in a race, yeah. we're losing. Buy an Xbox. It's like, why would I do that? You've just said it's it's inferior. Even if it is or isn't, it's the most powerful console. Um, but, yeah, whether it is or isn't, saying that it's the most powerful console, but we're not sold. And it, I mean, the VHS, everyone had a VHS. Nobody had a Betamax. And my God, it's absolutely snowing like a mofo outside in Manchester. Um, anyway, uh, it, nobody had a Betamax. Everyone had VHS, but Betamax was the uh, most superior uh, of the two. And I believe... It was the same thing with uh, HD, DVD, and um, uh, Blu-ray. I, th I'm, I could be wrong. I'm fairly sure HD, DVD was actually better than Blu-ray, but it might not be. It might just be a case of something that my brain's kind of merged over time. Anyway, Xbox <laughs> is better than uh, Xbox One X is is technically better than a PS4 Pro. But does that matter if you don't have the experience yeah. and everyone's got PS4? Not really. Um, but yes, um, turning that tangent back to the article. The lack of launch exclusives. They don't have any launch exclusives for the Series X. That's not to say, though, that they don't have any launch games. We know that they'll have Halo Infinite. There will yeah. be more content. Will there be Xbox exclusives? There's got to be. There's got to be. Um, and as Enix has said in the chat, Halo, Forza, and Gears is all I need. Yeah, if, if they, a very long-standing series. That, <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. I mean, we're not going to get Gears at launch because we've just got Gears 5. Uh, yeah. and possibly unlikely to get a Forza because we've just had the Eliminator added to uh, Forza um, as well. So, But we have an, a Halo game, and if we do have any like first-party exclusive, not necessarily Series X exclusive, then it, that, that for me does the trick in terms of if it plays across them all, you can still have your exclusives, but you can look after the ecosystem. And that, that from a user-centric point of view, not as in someone in the games industry or someone that has... I'm I'm and and most of the people in here watching this won't be your average gamers. You will be invested gamers, and, and that the difference is you won't be the mainstream gamer. A lot of mainstream yeah. gamers will have one console, and um, that's kind, that's kind of it. They they don't need to have all of the things all now or whatever. But having games coming out and then being able to play them on the consoles that you have already that's that's kind of the key thing. I mean, Godfall coming out on the PS5. Are we going to be able to play that on the PS4? And it's that sort of conversation there. So it is very very pro consumer, which is good to see. Good to see. Anyway, jumping back to the chat, Game Pass is a great reason to jump onto the Xbox train. But if PS fire back with a new improved service, what does Xbox have to offer then? PS have a better first party selection and potential back catalog than Xbox. Uh, Pow, 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 shots, pow, pow. I mean, that's that's true. Game Pass, though, is incredible. I'm not sure Sony have anything to uh, compete with that. I mean, we mentioned it before. It's, you, you you always do things that are that are a bit more uh, risky. Drastic. When, when, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Drastic when you're in second place. Sony aren't in second place, so they don't need to be drastic. The thing, that kind of ties through. We've spoken about developers uh, previously and how things like Game Pass impact on developers, and, and they'll impact on... Um, the type of games made and so on. Uh, there was there was an article yesterday saying Borderlands Two sold two million or three million copies or something like that. Um, eight. Eight. <clears throat> uh, eight. Oh no 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 no. It's not, it's not Borderlands I'm on about. It's it's out of world sold two million or something. Um, right. But they don't know the impact that it being on Game Pass has had on that. And that that for yeah. me is kind of worrying in in terms of that's big that's big business big money and you don't know um, how how that's had an impact on your business. I mean, would it have sold 6 million or would it have only sold 1 million? That's that's kind of, yeah, we're in the mm -hmm. Key thing for me is replayability and multiplayer. Literally, PS Now is 80% streaming games in 720p. Tried it last week, it was a huge disappointment. I, uh, yeah, I echo that. I, I, I'm not interested in PS Now. Uh, it need it does need to up its game. But then again, I have all of the games that are on it, So which is another weakness of it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I just realized uh, the less powerful console has always been my fave. SNES, um, over, so you preferred SNES over Mega Drive, uh, say uh, PlayStation over Saturn, PS2 over Xbox 360 over PS3, and now PS4 over Xbox. That's that's essentially the same thing for me. Um, although by the end, I prefer the PS3 over the Xbox 360. Although I did have the Xbox 360 first, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think the fact they started pushing PS now heavily recently. Uh, I'd like to think they're looking to improve that service. Yeah, you'd imagine so. You'd imagine so. With things like Apple Arcade, uh, uh, Xbox Game Pass, uh, all of the subscription services like your Netflix and your Primes and so on, it's it's a more modern business model. And it, you keep if you can keep people in paying £7 a month, for people like us that might uh, throw money at the big games and releases pretty often, 
you will you you lose it. But we are a small percentage. The majority of people might buy a game every few months, or some may may only buy a couple yeah. of games a year. If you're giving them, you're getting them to commit to seven, eight, nine, ten pounds a month every month. That's one hundred and twenty pounds ish, one hundred to one hundred twenty pounds that you're getting from them each year guaranteed every single year until they cancel that subscription and that is the smarter business model um well if you if you are quote unquote a casual gamer how much do you reckon a month that you'll be spe- a year that you'll be spending on games if you are i imagine this is so like o- over the top kind of statement to make but if you are a casual gamer you probably buy a fifa uh, or a call of duty every single year which is what 120 quid ish if you're paying 60 pound a game 50 pound a game if you're paying a monthly subscription of eight to ten ga- uh, to ten pound a month then you're getting a lot more content for the money that you're spending so it's definitely worthwhile in doing that if you are a casual game imagine how many games you've got open to you. even if you're a hardcore game it's it's a stupid amount of money to be able to play to find these stupid amount of games for you to be able to play yeah absolutely uh, definitely because if um i mean I I oh, do you know what I'm, I'm in a I'm in a privileged position with the uh, industry that I work in. I get a lot of games that I don't have to pay for, um, but if I paid for the amount of games that I get and and then don't play because I play PUBG, uh, then then it would be better for me to just invest in a Game Pass uh, scenario. It wouldn't be better for uh, for Xbox because I'd be like, well, buy buy yourself three four games a year and you save money by buying a Game Pass sort of scenario. So the average gamer that maybe buys one or two games. Um, if you buy one or two, um, then yeah, you kind of maybe buy one. Then it's not it's not necessarily the great greatest value for you. But if you buy a few games, buy three to four games per year, then it, it suddenly becomes a no brainer. And then especially yeah. if you get ultimate and you can take it on your, your mobile and stuff as things progress, then yeah, absolutely, absolutely, definitely the way to go. Um, PS now will be gone if PS five is backwards compatible. Uh, and Spike says uh, it depends. I mean, getting the old games isn't possible for all. They're bound to have a subscription service too. Uh, and then finally game pass is great i think probably downloaded games i maybe wouldn't have thought about buying but i'd like to see both have a great service uh, anyway we will let you guys continue with that discussion we have uh from one side of the console war to the other we have some interesting news from sony's camp uh, and i've just opened up something there we go oh uh, sony paid 229 million dollars for insomniac <clears throat> so SEC filing reveals acquisition cost of Ratchet and uh, Ratchet and Clank and Marvel Spider-Man developer in a majority cash deal. Sony has revealed the price it paid uh, to make longtime collaborator Insomniac, Insomniac Games part of the PlayStation family. According to a filing made today with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the acquisition of the studio cost Sony twenty-four uh, no, twenty-four thousand eight hundred ninety-five million yen, which is two hundred twenty-nine million dollars, paid out mainly in cash. Sony announced the deal last August, following up on the success of Insomniac's PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game. At the time of the studio's sale, the game had sold more than 13.2 million copies. Prior to the sale, Insomniac Games had worked closely with Sony for decades. Founded in 1994, it only released games on Sony platforms for the first 18 years of its existence, creating franchises like Spyro the Dragon, Ratchet and Clank, and Resistance. It branched out in 2012 with the Facebook game Outer Noughts, and it's since explored development for mobile, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PC, Oculus Rift, and Magic Leap 1. Those days are presumably behind it at the time of the acquisition announcement. Then Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden explained that the addition of Insomniac Games to SIE WWS reiterates... That's uh, Worldwide Studios, by the way. Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios uh, reiterates our commitment to developing world-class gaming experience that can only be found on the PlayStation platform. Mm-hmm. Oof. That's, that's, that's a big old acquisition. It is, but how much do you reckon that they've made back from uh, the Spider-Man game? Uh, it's it's, it's 13.2 million. Right, okay, let's get the old calculator out. <laughs> uh, just adding in the uh, discussing now topic. Uh, Games uh, 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 cost uh, uh, $229 done on screen now, pow. Yeah. So, I mean, just while you're calculating that, I think this is kind of one of those big moves that essentially has to be done. Insomniac, if, if, I'm, if I'm right, Insomniac made uh, Infamous as well. Is that? Yes. Um, which, um, obviously, in Infamous 
kind of grew with prestige. Uh, the first one was, was okay, uh, and then obviously Second Sun, Last Light on at the start of this gen. Actually, quite a while ago now. Uh, did, they, did they make it? I'm, do you know what? Let's Google it. I'm fairly sure. Uh, I know they made Ratchet and Clank, and I'm, uh, they definitely made Spyro the Dragon. Infamous Second Sun. Oh no, it was Sucker Punch. There we go. I'm getting mixed yeah. up with Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, so yeah. They didn't make that, but anyway, Insomniac, uh, whether they made those or not, the fact that they've they've made one of the most successful video games of the last two or three years, GGWP. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, strange, I get Insomniac for free. Oh, that's an absolute bargain, mate. Um, but yeah. Oh my god, they made Disruptor. Did you ever play Disruptor? No. It was a proper shit game on the PS One, but it was amazing. Breaking news. Bibby plays <laughs> shit game. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, to be fair, at the time, it was decent, but it's not aged well at all. Now, Disruptor was such a good game. Most PS1 uh, games, to be fair, haven't aged well. It's only the ones that were truly something special. Uh, uh, 13 uh, multiplied by, say, £30 a game for Spider-Man is £390 million. Uh, See, I, I, th- I think £30 is, 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 is a bit less. I'd, I'd say on average it's probably about forty to forty-five pounds, especially for a game like that. Yeah, I think I think Spike's thirty is probably a safe bet, though, in, including like yeah. sales and discounts. I mean, three hundred ninety like grand, three hundred ninety mil have made them already. Yeah, exactly. And, and not only and that, then... the um, the uh, thirty pound will include uh, obviously sales and discounts, and not all of that forty-five uh, is probably going to be profits <laughs> and stuff like that. And then obviously you've got to yeah. pay Marvel for the use of the uh, so on. So it'll probably be less than that that they actually got. But yeah. That if they deliver another one of those games, they've paid for themselves. <coughs> yeah. Especially when you look at how many how many different studios did Microsoft add to its its studio line last year? How many times did you like you watch an E three conference or an Xbox? Uh, what, what do they call it? Is it Xbox on their live shows as well? Whatever the Xbox not Xbox's version of PSX, um, and it was like world premiere and then it was like new edition or like whatever i can't remember what my uh, xbox is is it like sony's got the worldwide studios so what do microsoft's studios are they worldwide studios is, is it not just called like microsoft studios let's, let's say it is um so yeah they added a bunch more studios did it was it ninja theory was the last one that they added uh ninja theory xbox uh, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so Microsoft purchased Ninja Theory uh, and a few others. They went through a big uh, spree of buying up studios, and you, you have to feel that that's got to be down to the fact that um, Sony has a bunch of studios that are delivering uh, games to a stupidly high level. Uh, yeah. So you've got the likes of Naughty Dog, you've got the likes of Insomniac, you've got the likes of. Is it, is it Santa Monica uh, that uh, yeah, Sony Santa Monica that delivered God of War? Um, so yeah, not saying that Microsoft doesn't have their own studios, but they have studios that aren't delivering anything to that sort of level. So you've got to believe that Microsoft buying up all of those studios um, is is them realizing okay, we don't have the first party titles, we don't have the games that that PlayStation has. So, yeah, that is for the players because they're literally providing the games. We have the best console, but nothing to show on it. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a three, four, five, six, seven year wait till you start to get the fruits of, of those seeds. Um, yeah. But by buying up all those studios, you've got to feel that Microsoft will have a much, much better, um, uh, much better console life on the next gen than they ever had on this one um, and and it shows you that sony aren't resting on their laurels if they're spending 229 million for an extra studio that, that essentially was creating them exclusives anyway they, they've realized yeah. okay these guys almost made us an exclusive if we don't tie them down now then they might almost not make us an exclusive next time or they might make an exclusive for uh microsoft uh oh pippy, pippy keeps falling asleep look he, he's having a bit of a he's having a bit of a kip oh bib <laughs> as it froze again yeah it's done it a few times now um uh yeah i went 30 pound because of reduced in sales so average out uh, i mean even if they only made 15 pound profit per sale that's 195 million profit from just spider-man so a loss of 35 million uh but they were made on dlc ratchet and Clank. yeah exactly and that's it and not and not only that that 229 is then amortized against all future sales then so if they make spider-man 2 which is pretty much dead cert if that makes 
let's say it breaks even again and does the same thing, doesn't improve on the sales, then you are heavily, heavily in uh, quids in. And by making it exclusive, there is no chance for the developers to go, actually, we aren't purely exclusively your boys, so we're going to make this uh, open to other uh, brands as well. Like like Grand Theft Auto being on PlayStation and then Rockstar going, actually, we we don't need to make it exclusive to you because we realize that if we increase our potential for uh, profits then then yeah let's put it out everywhere yeah. so by buying them up there's no issue there's no chance of them doing that or there's no chance of xbox going yeah okay insomniac yeah you realize that they've made massive games elsewhere well we've got them for iron yeah. man or whatever or maybe not a marvel game but something themselves so yeah but you're buying up essentially the yeah, any potential for that also days gone was amazing i need days gone too i have days gone and it's on the list of games that I haven't yet played. I, I have installed in my library. Uh, well, not installed. I have it in my library or installed. There's a few of them. Um, and I've not played it. I haven't played it. Uh, who made Days Gone? I'm trying to, was uh, it, so it was, was it Sony Santa Monica. Uh, uh, Bend. Yeah, it was Bend. SIE uh, Bend Studio. Yeah. I got... I got Hmm. Anyway, from one zombie game, nice tedious link into another. Uh, as let me just bring that up. Boop. There we go. Written by Michael Beckwith for Metro. Former Daisy devs form new studio with THQ already working on a survival shooter. All right, calm down, babe. I mean, y you look like you sat there static and haven't moved for three or four minutes, but I could tell <laughs> just how excited you are. Um, Potentially. Yeah. For those of you that don't know. Uh, Bibby is, is is a bit of a survival guy. Do you know what? T tell us a little bit about it, Bib, so I can type stuff. <laughs> uh, so anybody who's played Daisy before will know that the initial idea was absolutely incredible. However, the delivery over time has become poorer and poorer. And it seems to have gone worse since they have brought out the console versions of the game, whether or not they're just focusing on that. Or, well, I think we talked about this last week or it may have been the week before about me about the the fact that i went to the booth at gamescom and spoke to the uh spoke to a few of the guys over there that was running the booth so yeah we've completely changed it up now the zombies don't walk through walls or they're not faster than you so you can actually have a chance to be able to get away and things like that and then i played it and it was exactly the same state that the game <laughs> that i left the game three years ago so i kind of you know I haven't reinstalled it anytime soon anyway but yeah, it, it, historically when it came out, it was amazing. However, games are doing it better now. So hopefully they'll have learned from the mistakes. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, whilst I'm doing this, if you want to turn your camera off and on, maybe it might make you come back to life. Okay, I'll try that. Um, so former Daisy devs form new studio with THQ already working on survival shooter. THQ Nordic and a number of developers from Daisy and Soldier of Fortune have opened a new studio and already have a new game in the pipeline. 2020 could be a good year for THQ Nordic. Not only do we still have that Destroy All Humans remake to look forward to, anyone, question uh, mark, the publisher has now established a new studio in Bratislava, Slovakia, dubbed Nine Rocks Games. It was founded by Slovak game industry veterans in conjunction with THQ, according to the still-fledgling website. Uh, its staff certainly have quite the CV, having previously worked on survival game Daisy, as well as first-person shooters, Soldiers of Fortune, Payback, and Chaser. Um, nice bit of a Donald Trump and Ross from Friends. Uh, anyway, uh, not only that, but it has already been confirmed that the studio is working on a new project. Details are scarce, but it will be a survival shooter title, something the staff already have a lot of experience with. We're very much looking forward to setting up shop in our office, gradually optimising our team size and getting to work on our project, said Nine Rocks Games CEO David Durchak via Gematsu. With THQ Nordic as a partner, our roster of talent found perfect conditions to collaborate on our first joint project. THQ Nordic CEO Clemens Kreuzer also expressed happiness at the new studio's formation. We welcome the newest addition to the THQ Nordic network of studios, Nine Rocks Games. I personally think it is always a great signing business when everything just seems to fall into place. The right people at the right time, having the right mindset and a meaningful conversation. We're happy to welcome the Slovak team on board and are excited about our first project with Nine Rocks Games. In the meantime, some fans may be still wondering where Dead Island 2 is. Initially scheduled for a 2015 release, news on the game has come to a standstill, but THQ assured fans that it hasn't been cancelled. A nice tedious link to a previous article there by uh, Michael for Gemetro. So, 
I mean, THQ Nordic are... They're definitely not shy of trying new things, buying up new shit. Pretty much. I mean, I give it three to four weeks before this becomes the THQ scoop. Because, you know, we are flying at the moment. All you guys in the chat with your comments, uh, likes, subs, all of that stuff. THQ Nordic must be out there thinking, do you know what? We need a piece of that. Because that's what they do. They buy up all the things. So it's, it's no surprise to see that um, devs that have worked on the likes of... Uh, um, uh, Daisy, uh, Soldier of Fortune. Was it Soldier of Fortune? It said, uh, "Yes, yeah. yeah, Soldier of Fortune." Paper Brilliant game, that. Um, so devs working on those, looking to create something new. It's not surprising to see THQ getting involved on the ground because they are very, very good at getting in a new business. Um, and if you have people that have like vast ex experience in terms of delivering that survival shoot of things so get daisy was essentially a genre starter i mean it, it probably wasn't there's probably people out there going uh, i think you'll find it was actually uh, day y came before it and then before that wh whatever the point is daisy took it to to a level that it hadn't been at before obviously it's progressed since then but if you've got people that have that level of foresight and ability to push things forward um then yeah, yeah, as Spike says, Daisy made that game style popular. If you have people that have the ability to do that, getting them in on a brand new project and giving them the freedom that they have for starting in a new studio then potentially could be exciting. And potentially could see Bibby doing lots of man squeeze on the air. Yeah. I, I do I, again I do miss playing Daisy because that was a lot of fun with my friends at the time. Um but it just it just, it became unplayable for me anyway. Um it's not even that it's not even the lack of uh, bullets and whatever else it's that it finally escaping the zombies chasing after you and then unfortunately them warping through the wall to kill you it's like it's a non-starter like if you can't if you can't uh give yourself the opportunity to stay alive by doing the, the simplest of things then the, i'm just going to abandon your game i'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, comments in the chat. Thought THQ made wrestling games only. They did used to make wrestling games um, until they went bust. Um, THQ made quite a few games, actually. It was quite a big uh, company. They had quite a lot of titles on their books. The Saints Row and things like that were made by THQ. Um, but then when THQ went under about seven or eight years ago, um, their IPs were sold off. Uh, so the likes of Koch Media or Deep Silver... Um, bought a few of their titles um, and then um, another company bought the rights to the company and whatever IPs were left and rebranded it as THQ Nordic. That has then gone through levels of investment and growth and THQ Nordic is now a massive company, probably bigger than THQ yeah. used to be um, initially. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of wh where it went from. Um, da -da 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 -da. Daisy made that game so popular. I'd say it was the beginning of BR2. Uh, fun fact! Uh, Minecraft was actually the beginning of BR, um, but but there we go. Uh, it, it progressed from Minecraft into uh, other mods. Uh, although that may not be exactly right. I know they were all kind of the same time. There was there was basically the Hunger Games films is what um, was kind of inspiring the the start of the birth of the battle royale genre. Obviously the film battle royale um as well but yeah yeah there's a documentary on jinx bibi told me about it that, that's probably the best way to see it it's, it's actually quite simplified there are videos and stuff on youtube that'll show it but yeah look at the brenda green story and it shows you about like armor mods and daisies and, and stuff like that but yeah yeah um the thing is with like games games like escape for tarkov you can't have issues like bib mentioned because people hold it to that standard uh yeah but minecraft br wasn't that made in the uh what wasn't or at least not my circle friends yeah exactly that's the thing but it's that's not what made it in your circle of friends, but you were saying the beginning of Battle Royale. You didn't say what made the genre popular in, in your circle of friends because uh, obviously it's a rolling stone. That inspires something else, which inspires something else. For a lot of people, Fortnite made the Battle Royale genre, but for a lot of other people like me, PUBG did. It. Although <laughs> in my circle of friends, it, it, it existed before PUBG. Um, but yeah, that was my that was my onboarding point. Um, uh, anyway, moving on. While Spike corrects himself, what he means there was he got it wrong, but he's, he's got a sticky tongue out emoji, which means he got it right. We know, we know. Uh, Fight Night PS4 could happen, he says, without even bringing the article up on screen. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> EA looking at bringing Fight Night back, but nothing is confirmed yet. 
Um, shout out to Mr. Asim Tambia, who sent us a link to this. Um, although I do believe it was on the uh, plan already. But here we go. Um, I sent you, I sent you, the, I seen it last night because Lennox Lewis posted something about it. So I sent you the tweet. So uh, I actually dug the story out there. Graham Day made VR in my circle of friends. Pow! Sorry, I was just looking at the chat. It caught me out. Um, yeah, fun fact. Fight Night was the first ever game that... What, what's the Xbox equivalent of getting a platinum trophy when you do all of the achievements? Fight Night Round 3 was the first game that I ever did that. Game of score, wasn't it? Yeah, but... but you what... say I 1K'd it. <laughs> 1K'd it, is that it? Yeah. Well, I won... that, 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 was my, that was my terminology and my friend's terminology, but I don't know whether or not... Because they didn't have achievements or trophies or anything like that. It was literally just like a game of score, wasn't it? So... The... The terminology from where I was from, anyway, was I've one K'd it. Oh, well, whatever it, whatever it was, I one K'd it too. Uh, it was the first one that I ever did. Anyway, look, uh, EA looking at bringing Fight Night back, but nothing is confirmed yet. Written by Joseph Yeadon uh, for PSLS, which is PlayStation Lifestyle, I believe. Um, congratulations to Joseph and PlayStation Lifestyle. You guys have now made it into the Ice Cream Scoop Hall of Fame. You've made it, I mean... Uh, don't quit your job now. I mean, I know it's tempting. Yeah. I know it's tempting. There's not really anywhere you can go, but just, just keep, just keep plodding ahead, guys. Do you know what? You may, you may, you may feature again. Anyway, one of EA's long dormant franchise that hasn't seen the light of day in some time is Fight Night. Its last entry uh, released in 2011 with Fight Night Champion. Although there is no official confirmation of the series' return, boxing promoter Eddie Hearn is pushing to see Fight Night make a comeback, and has even reached out to EA about it. Hearn was recently interviewed by the Boxing Voice, and he seemed optimistic about a new entry in the series. Publisher EA is apparently looking at bringing it back, though nothing seems to be set in stone. During the interview, Hearn was asked, has any game developer reached out to you about making a boxing video game? Here's what he had to say. No, but they've got to because every time I tweet about it, it goes crazy. I actually wrote to EA Sports and said, do you really uh, realise how many questions I get about Fight Night games? Uh, let me bring it back. He later said, EA responded with, we're looking at it, which is no confirmation by any means, but certainly an optimistic look at what could be the return of the franchise. You can watch the interview in full below. Um, Fight Night is at the 1 minute 45 mark. If you want to click it, the video is there it will be in the show notes if anyone wants to uh, click through or we could drop it in the chat if you guys i won't play the video here um editors note it should be noted that this is second-hand information through her who is not affiliated directly with ea we don't have any acknowledgement directly from ea regarding the future of fight night or even if the company is looking to its return However, the Fight Night series first started on the PS2 with Fight Night 2004, followed by Round 2 in 2005, Round 3 in 2006, Round 4 in 2009, and Champion 2011. The latest entry was presented as a darker and grittier take on boxing with an emotional story to go along with it. Because of its tone, violence, and language, it was the first and so far only EA Sports game to receive an M rating by the ESRB. Last year, boxer Clarissa Shields said she'd been contacted to be part of what she thought was a new fight night for PS4, but it ultimately, ultimately turned out to be a mistake. Not much else has been discussed about the future of the series, but judging on Hearn's optimism, we could very well see it return. Would you would you would you jump in the ring for a new fight night, babe? Absolutely, mate. I absolutely adored the fight night games. Um, <clears throat> Champion was sensational. Uh, that was such such a good game. Uh, so I do hope at some point we do get a new one, whether or not it's going to be story led again. I don't know because it was really weird the old the old Fight Night games, wasn't it? Especially like round two and three, where like you say you one K it, but to one K it you literally just needed to play the career mode. Yeah, exactly. But the career mode, as far as I remember, didn't have any cutscenes or anything. It was just you fighting this guy for this title, you fighting this guy for this title, you defending it against this guy. Um, but champions seem to have taken it to the next level. I would absolutely love a proper storyline uh, fight night again. Yeah, I mean, EA have since then had a bit more of a play in terms of those story modes. Obviously, we've seen the journey uh, and uh, make a feature in the FIFA series. You kind of feel yeah. that they've learned a lot through doing champion, through getting that M rating from the ESRB. Is dark and gritty the way that they need to go? Um, maybe we look at, see how the journey has fared clearly that didn't go to the m rating because they wanted that to be more of a family slash younger audience uh approachable game so they've, they've got a lot of learning through then and not only that ea elsewhere has been telling some amazing stories uh, as bibby's finding out this week with jedi fallen order um so yes. yeah they've, they've definitely will have learned a lot um and for myself personally i would massively massively like to see it uh, but jumping in the chat, Fight Night is too late for me. I love the last one, but I can't see it being so good these days. Fight Night was ahead of its time. I can't see a new one being so great. I disagree. Um, oh, we've had we've had the MMA games, which I am not an MMA 
guy, he just have a UFC. That, that That's how little I know about the sport. But for me, it does absolutely nothing. And the UFC games tend to do all right. So they've, they've still got the combat physics in a game somewhere. But yeah, it's not for me. Um, Spike being captain negative about everything again says MMA games from EA are shite. So we don't like boxing. <laughs> we don't like uh, EA. We don't think Minecraft this, that and the other. But I would say, um, I mean... MMA games from EA are shy is, is it's a perfect opinion to have. Uh, I have an MMA game from EA and I thought it was pretty good. Um, didn't stick at it for a while, but that's because my interests aren't massively invested yeah. in MMA. MMA... I don't like it. Um, I like to watch the big fights. It's kind of like boxing. I mean, boxing probably because it's been around forever uh, and is, is, is arguably simpler obviously boxing purists will smash my face in quite literally for saying that but mma having multiple different um uh styles and uh not styles what's the, i can't remember the word uh, i would say combat styles no there's, there's a specific word uh and you know i forget the word um but mma has a lot more to it so you can punch kick grapples and submissions and stuff my issue with um the mma games ufc uh was that um, it was too heavily swayed towards submissions. I kept, like, whenever I got into fights against easy p CPUs, I'd smash them quite easily, turn up a bit harder, and they all just wanted to make me tap out, whereas I wanted it to be a bit more brawlerish. But that's because my experience with fighting games of that style come from Fight Night. And smashing a haymaker uh, when the opponent's just overcommitted to a punch, and you're just like, yeah. bam, just nothing felt as good as that. And that's what I always wanted from uh, the MMA games, which then leads into the way that those games felt. Um, you playing Fight Night round three in particular, that was kind of like a key point in the series for me. That's where it kind of like grew up and hit at the hay, hey day. Hey. Um, but look at how good that was for its time because they embraced new concepts and new ways to play, like fully using the sticks. And uh, that was miles ahead of where it had been before. There's nothing to say that, that we, we can't get that again. Um, and that combined with, I mean, it was good then because they focused on facial visuals and being able to like remend your faces and stuff, obviously after fights and so on. But the bodies, it was kind of like the WWE games. The boxers' faces were amazing and the bodies looked okay. Whereas now you'll get full high tech body mapping. Arenas will be amazing. The intros will be amazing if they're looking through a story mode. I mean, the graphics, that that ray tracing element, it will all just look crisp and class and if they can get solid balanced gameplay as we had with fighter yeah. round three but using modern technologies then um i wouldn't i wouldn't say that it's too old uh or, or it's been done and they can't make it i mean anything can be reinvented uh so yeah i think they can reinvent that in a way that it will still have some pull i think now is a good time for it as well in terms of boxing british boxing in particular has had a bit of a resurgence it's not even stepping into the realms of uh, content creators venture into boxing but just boxing itself over the last two three years we've worked in boxing uh, we did some boxing promotion for video games actually um shout out to world of tanks who uh, we worked with to do some sponsorship for um the hair value fight last year yeah before whenever it was um yeah so the uk boxing scene is growing there is a growing demand for it um and love him or hate him uh, eddie hearn is having a big part in that um so yeah if he can use his uh swear to get as a new boxing game i would happily i would happily jump he's, he's literally got a, ma a little small book of contacts on it like when i say small i don't mean like his circle the, the the names that are in there are small he literally has a pull in everything to do with boxing pretty much from the from looking from the outside in any way so if anybody's going to try and get this over the mark and someone who wants to be the market leader in pushing this game forward i assume it's probably going to be that guy yeah absolutely just want to jump into the chat. Marriott Bonvoy ad looks the part. Going to book a holiday. I've <laughs> just seen that then. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's this. Over here on the side, Marriott Bonvoy. Uh, nice nice <laughs> bit of product placement there on, on the website. Good spot. Good spot. Um, knowing EA, they'll add a train mode where you're Tyson Fury pulling a gypsy caravan for stamina boost. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. I don't know. That, that'd be quality. It sounds like you're saying that, that as a negative. What? <laughs> uh, if we get a new fight night but not skate for EA can eat my ass. Uh, I've met Tyson Fury, a great fella, best boxer in a while. Uh, Undertaker. Esque. Oh, really? Interesting. Could smell a fight night. Ultimate fight night mode coming. Oh, okay, see, now that would would start to ruin it for me. Uh, because when I say there's a lot of new systems and things that can be included in it, um, I wouldn't... 
I'm not sure boxing transition transcends in that sort of way. You've got team sports that are open to a league sort of system, so like football and hockey and uh, American football. Those like trading into trading into um, foot and uh, whatever the NHL uh, is that called nut <laughs> or hut <laughs> or, or whatever. Um, but then you've got mutt Madden Ultimate Team. Uh, I, I know it's not nut by the way, just just for the ones. Um, uh, so yeah. <laughs> I, just fucking, I love a, I love a good nut mode, <laughs> but, oh, fuck but like yeah, if you get um, those modes, they're based on open ended seasons, whereas boxing doesn't really have that, so it would be quite difficult. But I think that is one system that I wouldn't want to see ported over. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, so yeah, looking at Spike, it says with regards to being Mr. Negativity Fight Night, it looked a uh, lot better than the, almost all of the games it was put against. It was also ahead in terms of the movement, etc. But games that have moved on a lot, I will undoubtedly look great, but I don't think it would shine brightly as its visuals as it did back then. Uh, I don't know because I do think that's the end the engines that they've got. I, I do think it'll look great in the Frostbite engine. I, I, as much as people don't like the Frostbite engine, I do graphically. It looks insane. If you if you watched any of the or played the new Battlefield, for instance, the the cutscenes that are used in that look phenomenal, and it was getting the best out of the Xbox 360 at the time. And I'm not, I don't really know what the engine was, uh, so I'm not even going to hazard a guess. But um, the Frostbite engine now looks phenomenal, especially when you are doing cutscenes, um, and even the the photo realistic kind of mocap that they could potentially use in this, uh, especially if you're doing a storyline with the the potential boxer that they're using. I think the the sweat, the lights, the ring, because you don't have to have that much on the screen in a boxing game, let's be honest. It's not it's not moving a million and one miles an hour like a football game is or any other sports game. Particularly if you're playing a, an FPS, um, not everything's happening at once so they can get the best resolution possible in something like that. And I think it would look phenomenal. That said, I haven't played or watched anything from the last UFC game, which kind of has, I imagine, the same camera angle and the same kind of uh, what, what do you call it, that collision and uh, collision engine in there for you to be able to do, do the boxing. So I, I, I'm, I'm unsure. I think it'll look phenomenal, is what I'm saying. Whether or not it plays that way, because if you're saying the MMA games are crap, I'm guessing that's to do with the actual combat system that they've got in there as well. I don't know. I've not played it. Um, but for me, visually, I think it would be one of the better looking games that we've had on the PS4, especially if it comes out towards the late stages of the PS4's life cycle. I think it could be one of the the, the most breathtaking games out there visually, whether or not it plays that well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> let's, I've got some uh, screens here. So I loaded this one up first. I've just searched for Final Fantasy Round 3. Uh, so this is uh, an image of Manny Pacquiao getting absolutely lit on Final Fantasy Round 3. And look at how good that looks. That was like well ahead of its time, but that's not even this gen. That is early in the last generation of games. So Final Fantasy Round 3, 14 years ago, that was released and it looked that good. If it was taken that seriously to the point of, um, like, MMA, uh, in terms of, like, let's show you this. I've just opened up uh, UFC 2. Um Obviously, there's not as much difference. You can definitely t see the difference in terms of uh, Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz on that screenshot there look like they're in the arena. Everything around it, the presentation, the package and everything, is, is uh, they fit better in it, whereas on the earlier screen, they look like they were sat on top of it, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but uh, you're saying that's the issue, though. People expect to want to go to the level. I don't think they can do it. I think they can. I'm not saying that I think that they will, but I think that they can, absolutely. If, if we're adding ray tracing elements to the next consoles, ray tracing is all about that. Ray tracing is literally tracing rays of light to to improve visual fidelity. You get better whites, you get better darks, you get better shadowing and shading. If they put that level of effort in that they did with a Fight Night Round 3 into a Fight Night game, then yeah, I absolutely can see that level of step up happening you don't get advancements without advancing so just because you don't expect an advancement to happen doesn't mean that it won't however uh like i say whether that actually happens or not is a different story because ufc looks good there but does it look a world away from fight night round three's uh, prime images not so much it looks really good as an overall package fight night round three the boxers looked amazing 
uh, you look at the background, it looks a bit pants. You're doing the training stuff before the matches where you're trying to, uh, in the locker room, it all looks a bit meh. The boxes looked amazing, whereas obviously what they've done on this generation is, is they've looked to give you the whole package. Everything looks good. The ring looks good. The dudes stood outside the ring look really good. It's all about the immersion in it. Now, if you add to that RTX, better graphics processing powers, just having an SSD which can load faster, then, then it gives them a lot more freedom to do that. Do I think that they can do that? Absolutely. Do I think that they will? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, I enjoyed UFC 3. It looked great and played well. Uh, I'm not hugely into UFC slash MMA, uh, though, so shrugs. But yeah, I agree with you, game. They could do phenomenal things with new consoles with Fight Night. Technically, visually, so much to work with. I held the belt on Fight Night around, th around 4. Oh, oof. I think it, <laughs> I think it's a challenge there. I mean, I've been shit at it. But yeah, go on. Let's, let's have it. Right? You get me. Uh, I guess we'll see. But I think when games have high expectations, they rarely meet them. Not at that level. But that's the thing. Does Fight Night have high expectations? Like I say, do I think it's possible? Yes. Am I expecting them to give me that? No. And that's that's the thing. There's no there's no mention of high expectations here. A, a boxing promoter would like to see a new game, and loads of people would love to see it. Nobody's expecting the world at the moment. We're just saying to Eddie Hearn, we want we want a game. So no one's questioning the level of expectation from it. At the moment, we haven't had a boxing game for nearly ten years, so the level of expectation is non-existent. It's just. It would be nice to see one. So Give me we, something. <laughs> yeah, I can say if we can get something that has, do you know, that just plays as solid as as Fight Night Round Three, Fight Night Round Four, Fight Night Champion, but has what EA has done with story modes and with graphical fidelity. If we can get that level of um, advancements in it, then I think everyone would be happy. At that point, you'd start to set expectations. But when you've got nothing as a baseline, then you can't really have expectations to begin with. Um, I agree with that. They can, but I don't think they'd invest so much. I mean, football is one of the biggest sports in the world, and even FIFA doesn't get big steps up graphically. But that's limitations. You can't. You can't. That, that, that's a game a year cycle as well. They, they haven't had ten years to finesse that and kind of. Game. Not only that, if you're already at at the peak. I mean, when you're in in your car and you've you've flying along at fifth gear and you're almost at the peak, there's only so much speed that you've got to go. Uh, engine analogy, because yeah, we're about to hit a new generation. That is when we should expect to see. The step ups in graphics um, by three or four years uh, of gameplay development in an, in a console, you shouldn't really be expecting too much more of a graphical leap there. Um, that's what the new hardware brings anyway. Um, imagine Tyrus, uh, Tyson Fury on Fight Night OMG, the coppers it would sell uh, to one bang someone with Wilder. Ooh, ooh, just imagine, just imagine, just little I'd make, I'd make little weedy me like swinging lefts and rights at. Uh, um, Joshua's knees. <laughs> Come down here, let me hit you, mate. Uh, I don't know why I suddenly. I just uh, that's me. You are. I just made butter bean with ginger ale and Abbey in. <laughs> that's my character started out. Uh, butter bean. I remember seeing him in WWE back in day. Uh, yeah, but Fight Night won't have been worked on for ten years either. Uh, how do you know? How do you know? Uh, that's that's speculation. Anyway, I need to go to work, so I should take my negativity there. Take your negativity. Enjoy work, dude. Uh, <laughs> Uh, adds place. I think it is fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'd, I'd welcome. I'd welcome a new fight now. I absolutely would. Um, it's, it's been what, as we can see, eleven years since Fight Night Champion. I wonder if that M rating scared them away. I wonder if they made it a bit more grittier. It, it kind of changed things. And admittedly, uh, boxing has been on decline. Uh, on the decline uh, for the last ten to fifteen years, it's slowly tailed off and over the last three to four years it's starting to pick up again so maybe fight night champion was a mixture of multiple things that the m rating the game being grittier therefore less available to people not doing so well and boxing in general starting to slide off because she'd had the likes of obviously um the pacquiao's and the hattons and and the calzaggies and stuff that kind of came and and fizzled away obviously mayweather um by that point, they were all kind of like on a decline, so to speak. A bit, well, probably not all of them in 2011, but they were. The boxing was on its way out at that point in time. Now is kind of. It feels like it's a good time for boxing to uh, get back in, and and that's how you keep the wheels turning by just resting on your laurels and going. Actually, do you know what? We've we've got a bunch of boxes and stuff now, and it's all good. That's fine. But but you need to add to that package. Then give people merchandise. Give people ways to consume the product. That's how you keep. Uh, your product and the demand for your product building when there's no fights happening um uh, a real fight would be great 
uh, hashtag, uh, take my takemymoney.jpg hashtag fight night <laughs> I'll take two yeah. uh, like a street fighter level fight night where there's a big skill oh, just imagine imagine uh, yeah that that would be class to see like like fight night esports full on people just full on KO I can, uh, do you know what I've designed it now I mean it's gonna be everyone's gonna do it but you're gonna have fighters in the middle of an actual ring it's not gonna be obviously four sided ropes but you can have three sides of it are gonna be fully kitted out ropes players are gonna walk into it they're gonna be sat uh, back to back at PCs or consoles or whatever and uh, facing each other obviously screens in the middle back to back like you would uh, in any sort of esports contest two players against each other that's that's what it's going to be calling it now if there is fight night esports that that is what the final is going to look like that is it i've just designed it ea sports send me my check now it's fine come on <laughs> uh, imagine if they did a ufc versus boxing crossover game <laughs> just imagine fucking uh some guy trying to wrap himself around tyson fury's leg <laughs> as he just bends down and goes <laughs> uh Right, we need to wrap this up because Josie's is due in in four minutes. We do, we do, we do. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Just one more comment. On the other hand, there is a lot of up-and-coming boxers at the moment because they don't make big numbers doesn't make them rubbish. The money has gone to UFC, and that's fine, but there's a massive gap in the market for a box, uh, for any boxing title regarding uh, of it, if it's EA or anyone else. I completely agree, and that's the thing. That's where um, all of the boxing camps need to get together and go, okay, this is how we get that money to trickle down now. Um, adding things like that, uh, things like that being the game and opportunities to merchandise, that's where you get extra capital and investment and build the scale of the scene and that is how you feed the people on the bottom rung at the grassroots. So yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today on The Scoop. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed it all the way through. Bibby did kind of give up on life and froze a few times if you were watching the video program. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. He does that. We accept it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, as, as Bibi mentioned, Josie will be back in about three minutes uh, uh, playing through some more Death Stranding. She'll be here uh, today and tomorrow. She's always here Tuesday and Wednesday. If you want to see a full schedule, you can see that on our Twitter. Also, whilst you're on our Twitter, scroll down and you will see we have a GT Omega giveaway in partnership with them celebrating our upcoming Ice Cream Uploads Invitational. And extra housekeeping, if you hadn't uh, seen it earlier on, we've just announced that Team Redmen, i.e. Redmen TV, will be taking part in the Ice Cream Uploads Triple Threat Invitational on the 28th of February. So make sure you check out all that news. Anyway, in the meantime, anything you want to add before we disappear? 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 <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as always, if you do see anything knocking about the Twitter hemisphere, then do feel free to tag myself. We've got to be in your Graham, Graham underscore day, and at Ice Cream Uploads. Very much like what Asim has done for us yesterday. Uh, sorry, this morning with the uh, Fight Night uh, new news kind of thing. So, yeah, if you see something, tag us. We'll feature it the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we do this, though, um, I did mention it yesterday, and Madge did drop a, a, a suggestion in after it had already gone to raid someone else. Uh, we will bring up our insights now, but if you do see anyone that you think you know what we could send all of our traffic over there give some guys a little bit of a, a raid that would be nice please feel free to drop suggestions in the chat and until then have yourselves a very very lovely day josu will be back in two minutes so you won't get very much time to but please feel free to stay frosty <laughs> <laughs>